Anyway, are we good? Mm -hmm. We're recording? Yeah. Amazing. Marta, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. So lovely to have you with us. And, and where I wanted to start, I'm constantly talking to actors, particularly young actors, who uh, I'm encouraging to watch more theatre, to read more plays, to work on more monologues, just generally um, get inspired, I guess, by theatre. Um, you've obviously had an incredible career, particularly obviously in theatre, but particularly in film and TV. Why do you think theatre is important and why do you keep coming back to theatre? Uh, so for me, the theatre is the touchstone. Um, we're entertainers and if we don't contact with our audience on a regular basis, I think we lose, it's like we lose sight a bit of what it's for, that it's not for us, it's for them. Mm -hmm. So um, for me, especially in theatre, particularly all of the work happens between the performers. I mean, that's the aim. What am I doing to you? What are you doing to me? Not how do I feel about that? How does that make me feel? So it just keeps me outside of myself from getting too indulgent. Mm. Um, I grew up in the theatre. I did 15 years pretty much back to back. And first, I mean, I dabbled in TV and film, you know, 19 through my 20s, but it wasn't until I was about 34 that I started doing the regular television gigs. And so all of my apprenticeship was in the theatre. Mm. The other good thing about that for me was I really learnt from people who were more experienced than me and that really counted. Mm. And there were no mobile phones. So we were in the room the whole time observing these, these triumphant performers practising their craft. So I picked up heaps of tips. I mean, I was the sort of actress that in a play, if I had a small role, I would sit in the wings and watch. And I think that's where young people should be. And it, it does sadden me when I see that they're not really tapping into the resources um, of the experience, when they're allowing themselves just to do their bit and then walk away. I get it doesn't have to be every night, but... Um, and certainly if you're not learning anything, don't be there. But uh, if there is something happening that you feel you can glean from or pick up or examine, uh, then, then turning up was my way of doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember learning on a play I did with Pamela Rabe many, many years ago at the MTC, The Miss Alliance. And it had Matt Gillies and Pamela Rabe in it. And I remember sitting in my dressing room, you know, obviously you're nervous, and I hear this uh, applause in the middle of this scene. And I think, how, well, how does that happen? So I just spent every night sitting side of stage watching how Pam and Max managed to get applause mm. in the middle of a scene. Not because that's what I wanted to aspire to, but I just was so interested in the technique that it takes to bring an audience so towards you that they need to applaud. Um, so little things like that. And when I started doing the TV, I really missed that connection with the audience and I missed rehearsal. Mm. You don't get to rehearse on television. So maybe, maybe you might do a read um, and maybe you'll spend half an hour with the director talking through the scenes, but you very rarely get up. Um, you really hit the ground running. Mm. So people say to me about theatre, how can you do it night after night after night after night? And I think it's not how I see it at all. Mm. It's not a repet repetition, it's a further examination. But you're examining on the space of a, I was about to use the word dime, which is not Australian, a coin. It's just, it's so tiny, the changes, and so, so particular. Um, it's an absolute delight. I'd imagine it's like being a painter who slowly makes changes right at the end of the work. Ah, oh, there just needs to be a bit more depth there, or what if I put a little bit of white there? No, that doesn't work. So the beauty of theatre is you get to try and risk and then erase, and then, so mm. I love it. I love it, that's a beautiful way of putting it. And do you find when you, if you've had a long stint of maybe working on TV, you have to sort of, does it feel like starting again or like having to go back to some of that old training or do you feel the TV still helps your theatre and vice versa? Do they kind of complement each other or does it feel like, wow, these are really different mediums that I've got to play in? They are and they're not. For me, uh, truth is at the core of all of it. 
So in television, I often get told by my cinematographers, you know, we're here, we're here, we're here, we're here. And I go, and? <laughs> like it doesn't, it, if anything, maybe you might intensify a little bit more through your eyes um, because it's exhausting to be that on all the time. So when you're in a wide, you don't, of mm. course. You give everything, but you just can relax off um, possibly that, that, that amount of, of intent. Um, but otherwise, it's just being truthful. So mm. when I do go back to theatre, the thing I've got to really get is my courage pants on because you can't be saved by an edit. You can't have another take and you can't for a second lie because they are right there to go, I don't believe that. You know what? I'm tired. You know, I need to check my phone because I'm addicted or what. So you're dealing with a bigger force that's coming towards you and you need to relax them enough that they trust you, but keep them on edge enough that they don't know what's coming next and they're willing to risk along with you. Mm -hmm. So that sort of metering is much more difficult, I think, whereas television, the lens comes to you and you can play inside of that manipulation. Mm -hmm. I don't know how else to explain it. No, that makes sense. And I think it's interesting that you put it like that because I think a lot of people feel the opposite. They feel the pressure's more on because you can't lie in front of a, a camera necessarily. Well, no so, lying ever is yeah. like number one. I like right? it. So, yeah. um, and if that means that, I mean, I've had a, a director who I love dearly and we've worked together forever, go to me, uh, which means cry more mm. and, or bring up the tears. And I have to say, I'm a little bit tired of women crying on screen mm. as a way of affecting an audience. So I'm, I am deliberately trying to find other ways that, that we can articulate our, our feelings without crying. Because mm. I think that's a little bit of a, a part of the stereotype of, of keeping women in the box of being too emotional or mm. emotional even. Whereas men are allowed to just feel things and that's really brave of them. Mm. So I, I, um, when I say that, I just mean sometimes when you're asked to do something, it might not sit right with you and that's okay. And we have to find our courage, especially I think as women, to go, you know, I, I actually am just feeling it mm. and that's enough for me. Mm. So um, yes, I am lucky. I don't feel the pressure of a camera. I will on a mm. Monday. On a Monday, it's, it's an amazing instrument that gets put in front of you. And sometimes, like on Janet King, I would have five lined up on me. Mm. Doing mids, wides, close-ups, different eye lines, crossing the line. And I would see the bank and my beautiful co-actors, like, fitting in between them so that I still have an eye line. I mean, act actors are the best, mm. right? They're, they're amazing. <laughs> Um, so, that, so I was never left alone and, you know, a crew of 50. Um, but I, I don't feel that pressure because I know the producers, editors, directors, if it's not working, they just won't use it. Mm. So you can be relaxed about that. That's really interesting because you say that with such ease, which is wonderful, and you see that in your performances. But so many actors are just crippled by self-doubt and self-talk. For you, was it was it putting in those hours? Was it just getting in front of that camera? Or was there a Absolutely. shift? Or I think as well, um, as a guest artist, we can talk about that. Um, they come on, they don't know anyone. They've had it for maybe sometimes only a week, maybe three days. I mean, it's, it's cruel. Mm. And I... I'm the first in the shows that I do to try and be to so available for those actors to say to them, you're brilliant, that's why you're here. You, I've got you, you've got me, let's play. Mm. Um, I think it's when it's you've got 20 minutes to shoot it and you're down on the call sheet and the producers are standing behind the camera because they're like, this is mm. costing us too much money. Um, and that is the time for other actors to rally around that person. And I have never not seen that happen on an Australian set. Mm. When I was a guest artist, always it was the actors who had the time and the care to say, 
I can see that you're visibly shaking. I'm totally here for you. If you want to take another one, let's do it. Mm -hmm. And most directors I work with are the same. Um, so it's just knowing that people have your back mm -hmm. and just trying to do the best work you can. It's the same in auditions. I, I used to go in and, and now I do it um, for the work. Mm -hmm. Like how would I play with this? What would this be? How could I make this for me and for the project, for the story? Mm -hmm. And forget about that I want the job because you only have what you have to offer. Mm -hmm. You don't have anything else. And that's okay. And often it's just that it's a hair color thing. I mean, why? I mean, I do plays also to show producers I can have different hair color mm. because they come to my plays and they do say to me, you, you, you look quite good as a brunette. And I go, yeah, that's what wigs are for. <laughs> like it's possible mm -hmm. because they're so busy um, and they're fixed on the characters that you've played. So it's also good to do theater to show people in the industry the different things that you're able mm. to do. Do you still audition? I do, yeah. yeah. Um, which, which drives me crazy because mm. I go, can't they watch the 100 hours of TV mm. that I have? But I understand that each time they're looking for that very particular quality. Mm. And because we don't value Australian actors as much as we value Australian actors who succeeded overseas mm. and overseas actors, we are the bottom of the heap. And I am uh, sad about that and frustrated, but I get it's a business. And it's really about the distributors demanding that they have particular names that can sell that product. So you think even if you have a really established name in Australia, if it's an Australian production, they still prefer bringing someone who's an Australian who's had some success in LA? Or Definitely. Yeah. yeah, because we have such a small uh, demand here. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are, we, they need people that can translate over there. The irony is that my shows sell all over America, all over England. I'm huge in Mexico, mm -hmm. um, which I'm super <clears throat> proud of. Um, uh, in the Asian countries, the, um, my shows equally sell. So, so I can't, I don't, when I'm in LA, which isn't that often, I walk down the street and I'm stopped. And I go, isn't it funny? And I can't come back and tell people that because that's not what Australians do. Mm. We don't say, you know, I'm really, I'm, I'm actually, in LA. I'm actually Good in yeah, yeah, like I, I'm actually quite, you know. Um, so again, it comes down to advocating for yourself. And as a woman, that's quite hard. Mm. And I'm learning to do it. And it's why I've gone into the producing side because I've understood that you have to know your own worth and and believe in that and and um, want to kind of nurture nurture story. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's really complicated. And I, right. I speak very honestly about it because it is real. Mm. And um, hopefully it helps people mm. know that we're all we're all trying to um, keep working. Mm. Uh, so yeah, we just need to look after each other. Totally. Did you, you were mentioning there about LA, did you consciously, um, have you made, you know, trips to LA? Have you kind of tried to break into that or you consciously went, I want to be Australian focused? Yeah. yeah. I, I went when I was like 20 um, and I remember I was there for six months and I ended up cutting all my hair off and flying back home and doing a co-op at the old Fitzroy nice. Theatre. Um, which I directed because I was so disillusioned at what they were looking for at that stage in my life, which was good looking, you know, good looking and um, good looking. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I can't learn anything here. Um, and that was my choice. And I don't disrespect anyone who does that because, of course, you get a break uh, for whatever reason. Now they're looking more at character actors and stuff. It's fantastic. So mm -hmm. it's different back then. And we were the minority, like to go over there was, you used to have to enter as an American, mm. which I always found very funny because mm. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> where am I from? I don't know. Um, and then I started doing the theater and I just, I was literally intoxicated. I was mm. like totally addicted. And I did play after play after play. I did lots of so I did the Actors' Company, the STC, then there was an ensemble at the MTC, then I did the Malthouse Ensemble. Mm -hmm. So I was in this 
this family that just um, different families, but we were working hard in the theatre and loving it. I learned so much. Yeah. And, and then the TV stuff started and then it was back to back for seven years. I did three shows back to back uh, and I would have two weeks break a year. So I'd do Jack Irish, Janet King and A Place to Call Home mm. in the same year. And I knew that was a blessing. I knew how lucky I was and I cherished it. It nearly killed me and I didn't see my family for a really long mm. time. Um, but I used to look at those crews and I would go, I'm not complaining because mm -hmm. they are there, like, you know. How did the, did you ever get close to any sort of burnout in that period? Definitely, yeah. yeah. Um, but that's the thing about actors, we know it's fleeting mm -hmm. and we know we're replaceable. And so, and we so want to please. I mean, that is, I think, the core of an actor that we, we, we say, I'm fine, I'm fine. And I was, I've got an amazing partner, Ben mm -hmm. Winspear, mm -hmm. and he looked after the kids and was there for me like crazily because he was from the industry. Mm -hmm. So if I'd been with a banker or a publican or a football or a tax guy, I mean, it just wouldn't have worked. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I was really, really blessed and we, we spent a lot of time, like the main thing, time I spent with my kids was in the bar. Mm. So I just have bars with them. And I'd be like, how are you? And then my body would be soaking at the same time. Um, and it was the cast and crew on those sets as well. We just <sighs> held mm. on to each other. And television is brutal. Mm. Like people say, think it's really glamorous. And then they come on set for a day and they're like, Wow. Mm. Like as Janet, I did not sit down. There was lunch for 45 minutes, sometimes 25 minutes, because I'd have to go back into makeup and do checkups, mm. um, checks for your face and stuff. I mean, I got to the point um, where I would just say, it doesn't matter. Like, just shoot it. Just, I don't care what I look mm. like. I mean, I think that's the best way to be anyway on TV. Um, mm. Certainly never wanted to keep anyone waiting. Mm. That was a big thing for me because oh. there's a lot of people there and they've all got families, mm. lives. So 70 hours was normal for me. Um, and how did you deal, because that, that is a phenomenal feat to do that and to balance those three very different shows. Mm. Um, on the days you weren't there, we were talking before about directors kind of encouraging you to cry and things like that and these sort of you know, external directions where they want an outcome. What would you do on the days where you weren't there and you weren't feeling it? Oh, it just never happened. Never happened? I, I mean, I'm, I'm being truthful. I just, yeah. I will not turn up and not be there. It just, I, that to me is like death. I love it. Um, so I just couldn't and I would find a way. And if that was saying to my fellow actor, help me, mm -hmm. um, or say to the makeup artist, I mean, Wizzy Molyneux, everyone will know her, was a huge rock for me and mm. I would sort of reach to her or Lisa Marr on Place to Call Home, a costume designer, and I'd just sit with her in the, in the costume truck and just talk. Or, and those was how, that was how you turned back up. Mm. And when the camera rolls, like I say, if you're not there, mm. I don't know how long. So you just said you just you were there. You just said you to yourself, to yeah, and whatever you needed to do, you get yeah. there. Yeah, I mean that was hard. She was a Holocaust survivor, and some days to go into that was really hard. Mm -hmm. um, but that's your job. Mm. I love it. Well, I think we'll have to finish there. But what an inspiring place to finish, and um, for everyone, when does the show open? It's happening. Next yes, week, I believe. Feb four, Feb four we start preview. Previews. Yeah, and I think the thing about this play, it might look like a sort of classic English. Eh, who cares? But we're doing it in our accents, which right. I think is really important for actors um, to hear themselves. And it's why I've stayed in Australia to work in my voice and with our culture and sensibilities and timings and ways we feel emotion and ways that we talk to each other. So the thing we always say in this room is it's got to be truthful and come from you and we are enough. Mm. And that's what I want to say to actors. You are enough. And if you didn't get the job, it's not because of who you are. 
it's they're just looking for something else. And every time a door has closed for me, another door has opened that is possibly more important. Mm. So, I love it. Well, beautiful place to finish. Thanks so much for taking <laughs> some time. My pleasure. Goes too quick. <laughs>